Today, I'm gonna start to fix this guy. This has been quite a while. I competed in Race Wars 2018 with this car. It's the event that we're getting the old tuba ready for, which, well, that'd be 2019. But this guy is definitely, I'd have to say, of all the cars that I've had, this is definitely my prize possession. This was a hard car to obtain, and it's been a bit of a trialing car to own. This is a 1984 Toyota Starlet. These were definitely not sold in the country that I live in, which is Australia. Uh, this was sourced from Japan and still has its original paint, uh, which I'm quite proud of, even though there are some dents and some scrapes and some scratches, I still maintain that it has its original paint. Now, what it needs is it needs the, the diff angle sorted. So when I did this engine upgrade, which is a 4AG turbo that it's got in now, which came out of one of my other cars. Also running Supra W58. Uh, the angle of uh, the motor is uh, quite tilted down to allow it to fit in the standard tunnel. And the diff, uh, I forget which way the diff goes, but the engine and the pinion angle don't exactly match. So what I have to do is modify the mounting for the diff and fix the uh, pinion angle. And that will start to fix my, well, <laughs> it'll help with the, uh, the traction issues that it actually has because uh, as you can imagine, it has a few traction issues. I have to run R comps on this full time. It just uh, refuses to hook up a lot, even with R comps. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty terrorizing, this thing. Uh, so the engine is built 4AG motor, uh, running a small port head, uh, coils on there. It's running uh, Eagle rods. Uh, Ross Pistons. Uh, the turbo is GTX2 uh, 2867R. Uh, so it's a very, very modern turbo. It's a fantastic turbo. Uh, running PWR AE86 radiator. Um, uh, running HKS 264 by 8.35 cams. And um, the throttle body is uh, 3SGE. Um, generation 3 uh, running now running a turbo smart uh, 44 mil gate uh, which is very very good uh, a lot better than the the teal tile with t-i-a-l whatever however you want to pronounce it uh, gate that was in there before Had a lot of issues with the previous gates um, but yeah now it's quite good so just gonna get it on the hoist and I'll show you guys what I mean by the issues that it has. To avoid 5,000 questions, uh, this is a Hilux diff. This is originally an RN60 diff, but I, uh, you can almost see in there, I've uh, shortened the diff. Uh, currently running SW20, uh, which is um, MR2, uh, turbo late model calipers and S13 discs. Still 4x114 uh, and uh, A86 struts in there. Uh, definitely has LSD. <laughs> <laughs> quite necessary and my issue is that these bolts keep falling out so what's actually happened is the bolts have like worn this out so the fix I'm gonna do 
is to weld hardened washers to the outside at the same time fixing the pinion angle and it should assist my traction problem so what happens is the uh, the angle of the gearbox doesn't match the angle of the diff pinion and this can cause all sorts of dramas but once those are fixed should be on the way to recovery and I can start driving this car again every single day now this motor makes a fair bit of power uh, people that know the motor will know that it's uh, pretty terrorizing and uh, yeah makes make some power <laughs> so yeah traction is a very very important factor in this car okay so a quick lesson in inclination measuring I have this device which is called by a few names but more commonly it's called a sextant level and you can see that there is a load of degrees on the side there uh, if my light can catch that and in focus so there's a bunch of degrees up on side here and when the bubble on the inside becomes level then that's and then you lock it off you can determine the inclination so what I do is I go up to here and we uh, focus that guy so I basically hold it up on here and I get this level and I can find out what the angle of the, the drive shaft output is. So I can tell that the drive shaft output of the gearbox is negative four degrees on this plane. So what I need to do with my diff uh, coming out of there, I need to match the diff with four degrees positive so that these are on the same plane. Now, don't get caught up thinking about the horizon and, and all that sorts of stuff. So the only thing that matters is the relationship of this spline to the face of the yoke. So this, essentially this flat face should be zero to the other end. So if we come over here with the same level, put it on there, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be pretty far out. So what we do is loosen these little grub screws and we hold this on here until the bubble gets a bubble. Sorry, it won't make the noise on mine. This can be frustratingly time consuming, but as long as you're within half a degree, it should be fine. Okay, so once I've got that set, I can tell this is zero. But you might be saying, oh, but the diff doesn't stay there. Well, you're exactly right. So what we have to do is push the diff through its range of movement and then measure the angles that the diff creates through its range of movement. Now I happen to know where the, the neutral plane is. So I'm just gonna move the diff through its range of movement and we'll measure it again when it's at its squat. All right, so I've got this level set up here now and I'll just flip it around and you can see that this is this is six degrees in the negative, so this thing needs to move heaps. So essentially the relationship at this point in time is the drive shaft is coming like here and this is uh, the diff angle is coming like this. So we need the diff angle to point up quite significantly. So I'm going to have to modify the top mounts up the top and curl this diff backwards so this goes positive four degrees and that will match the negative four degrees at the other end all right so what I've done is I 
line up the diff, set the pin angle, save you all the boring stuff. And I actually like, just made some plates. Uh, this was a, uh, a piece of SHS. Uh, it's uh, three mil. It's the same thickness as the like, original diff. And while the diff was set in position, I welded the outer plates on. And what I'm gonna do now is put this bolt through. And then that's the left hand in. Gonna set this. It's like a lot more difficult than you think with one hand on your camera. And pretty much, you saw it there, it fits so good that the bolt fell out. And uh, line that up and set them in there. Also like, put that bush in there a little bit. And uh, yeah, take those in place. And what, what I'll do is I'll put a back on that as well. So it'll be uh, sort of flanged all the way around. And it'll be, uh, what's the focus doing? What are you doing? It'll be flanged all the way around. So it'll actually be stronger than it was before. And I'll have a bit more clearance in there as well. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. So when we're done, we end up with something like this. I've taken all the interior out here, and what I'm gonna do is get in there. Inside the car, you can see where I sort of clearanced it out, but here itself, you can actually see where the tail shaft has actually been rubbing the body. So this whole thing pretty much will need to go. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll cut up to here because this is uh, main support for the center of the vehicle. So I'll probably go a little bit inside here and cut all the way up to there. And I'll just um, make a bit of an insert for a tunnel and um, yeah, make a new piece so it's got heaps more. Uh, clearance for the drive shaft and the universal joint. Fortunately, from the 1980s, the way they made the seats, uh, especially in this uh, Starlets and through the Corollas and stuff, then, uh, you know, this uh, seat design will allow me to pretty much take out as much as I really want and will give me a lot of room to play with and I'll be able to just slide the seat back in and uh, no one will ever know the wiser. Times like this, you have to tell yourself it gets worse before it gets better.
So I've taken the front fender off. I was uh, in a little bit of a incident some time ago, which has sort of propelled this uh, all these changes. Uh, I pulled the fender off to realign the, the front end of the car. It wasn't completely straight. And I've remade this uh, red support panel. You can uh, feel free to rate my welds. Uh, I've changed intercooler from the PWR cooler that I used to have to a, a Ford Falcon uh, FG type uh, intercooler. Um, this will outflow what I require for my setup. Uh, four litre motors are making 300 kilowatts on these setups and I'm making I think about 260 kilowatts uh, ish. Uh, so all I'm gonna need to do is uh, get some hose adapters. I need a two to uh, two and a half inch 90 and probably a two and a half inch uh, 115 or 135. Either of those I can work with. So I've put these on here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll drill a round hole and make it square and I'll be able to use the original uh, little plastic inserts and those are the mounting uh, points for the factory grill. Um, I've got a different model bumper on it now. People who followed this car for a while will probably know that I, I had the, uh, the late model like standard bumper <laughs> for this model. Uh, this is a, a factory sprint. This is the highest spec model you can get them with. Uh, this guy came with aircon and, and all that sort of stuff. So it was a um, pretty high spec model. Came with a different interior. Uh, I'm running, uh, you can't really see because it's like rather dark at the moment. I'm running SW20 seats in this. And uh, this came with the factory uh, taco dash and everything. So this car also came EFI as denoted by the nice stickers on there. So these uh, these run the the same fuel tank as the Carby models. Uh, but the difference with these is they have what all of us would, in Australia anyway, would recognize as a, a VL Turbo uh, pump, which is a Bosch uh, 910 pump uh, running external. So the tank is not baffled and it just runs a, a pump in a rubberized uh, dampened uh, bracket that's external and that feeds and uh, all the, the lines are made for this specific model, this uh, EFI Sprint model. And I've already put uh, holes and uh, captive nuts for the radiator mount. All these uh, threads in here are all uh, captive nuts all the nuts, uh, except for those two, obviously, the captive nuts in the chassis, and captive nut for this one, and captive nuts for this guy. It's all integrated into the uh, the radiator uh, support support, and uh, there's a uh, a uh, little strut that goes in behind there, just like a factory car, but I've made it so that so very very well supported, and even standing on that i can't even bend it so it's even better than the factory so my end goal with this car is to really have it engineered and completely road legal because uh even though it's licensed as efi twin cam not necessarily licensed uh with the power adder uh, and it would be really nice to well for for bragging rights alone to say that this car is uh you know, completely street legal and street car. Here's a street car through and through. I drove this to the last race wars, uh, 2018. Competed, did 242 k's an hour over uh, 800 meters, and then uh, drove it home. Uh, it made it to Albany, which is uh, 402 kilometers, I believe, uh, from here, from where I am, uh, in less than one tank. Uh, and that's uh, with this motor, with this powertrain, no modifications to the maps or anything. Simply turn the key, start it, drive it, do the event, drove back. So that's uh, probably a pretty good bragging right. And it, um, it hosed quite a lot of cars and uh, quite a lot of cars that needed to be trailered there and all that sort of stuff. But 
you know, I'm not gonna brag, I'm just gonna say that's a pretty cool achievement.